Hello and welcome to this Cliff Generation video series. In this video I will introduce the goal of this video series and an overview of each of the chapters. Throughout this video series I will walk you through the workflow for generating procedural cliffs for a large landscape. We begin by setting up a series of digital assets to generate a cliff and then use them in a tops network to generate cliffs for the entire landscape. I'll demonstrate how to save the tops network as a digital asset so that it could be then used in Unreal with Houdini Engine. One goal of Project Pegasus was to utilize Unreal 5 features such as Nanite. This meant pushing to create highly detailed geometry. Houdini PDG and TOPS workflow excel at generating and processing large amounts of procedural data, but it presented a challenge importing such a large amount of data into Unreal. For this reason, in the later videos, I create a second digital asset that can aid in importing the landscape files into Unreal in smaller batches and help avoid running out of memory and crashing Unreal. I have to preface that generating and importing such a large amount of geometry into Unreal is not a fast process. In some cases, it took a few hours to generate and import the files. Computer memory and CPU speed will play a factor in how long it will take to generate the cliffs and how much detail you can add. I've tried my best to be as transparent as possible in demonstrating the process and how best to manage computer resources. My aim with this video series was not just to explain the process, but also to capture the troubleshooting I undertook in developing the workflow. In the first video, I will walk through the setup of the project files and how to set up a package file. In the second video, I will demonstrate how the cliffs can be extracted from the landscape and converted into geometry. In the third video, I will walk through the process of subdividing and displacing the geometry using height maps. In the fourth video, I will take a momentary detour to set up a Unreal material, which will be needed for the following video. In the fifth video, I will demonstrate how to split the cliffs sections into smaller tiles, making it easier to import the geometry into Unreal. I will also show you how to set up Unreal attributes to enable Nanite, set a bake folder, and to reference the previously created Unreal material. In the sixth video, I will save the previous workflows as Houdini digital assets. In the seventh video, I will set up the digital assets in a TOPS network and demonstrate how it can be used to process and generate glyphs for the entire landscape. In the eighth video, I will save the top network as a Houdini digital asset. In the ninth video, I will import the PTG digital asset into Unreal and demonstrate using PTG within Houdini Engine. In the tenth video, I will demonstrate an alternative workflow which will see me run the TOPS network from within Houdini and create a second top network that can be utilised to import the cliffs into Unreal in smaller batches. In the eleventh video, I will demonstrate how to use the second PTG digital asset in Unreal to import the cliff files. In the 12th video, I will demonstrate subdividing the geometry even further. Importing such a large amount of detailed geometry into Unreal causes significant memory issues, as Unreal crashes trying to import all the cliffs at once. I will demonstrate importing the files in, in smaller batches to avoid these issues. And in the 12th and final video, I will create the final material that I used with the cliffs using textures downloaded from the Megascans library.